second. And now it's going. It's going. It's live. It's live. It's Friday. And it's live. It's live. Drawn to fantasy. Drawn. It's drawn. It's drawn to fantasy. Hello, it's Friday, people! Friday, Friday, Friday! Get a little puppy paw. <laughs> Okay. Hey guys, okay. what's going on? Ooh, Penny said meow meow. Valerie, Eleanor, Jason. Angel Tyrell Voss. Lexi and in the house. Eleanor West. And don't forget Avery Wells. Wait, it just gave me an option to put this on my TV screen. Oh, there it is. That means they started doing it so you can see it on your TV if you have a smart TV. Watch it on Watch your TV. On big screens. Da -da -da. At fantasy. We're all drawn to fantasy. To escape our reality. Drawn. We're drawn. 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 Welcome. It's Friday, TGIF. Hopefully, it's a payday for you. Cha-ching. 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 Um, we are paying our lawn maintenance guys. We're keeping them busy, keeping them working. So you're going to hear the occasional rumble of a lawnmower as it blows by and cleans up all the winter debris. Because you know what? We don't want these guys to not have work coming in. No, so we certainly don't, our Ange. spring is springing here. Spring is sprung. Spring and you know, honestly, I'm so glad because they're sucking up all the leaves. Yes. And uh, Buy ticks. I, uh, buy ticks. And also, I gotta be honest, I don't clean up the dog bombs during the winter. No, so I'm that totally mower, is that's going to be a full bag. That's a, that's a <laughs> real full bag. That's a, he's okay, going to be emptying later. That's more than everybody needed to know. Well, you know, hey, listen, I'm as human as the next dog owner and <laughs> as lazy. Um, it's episode 27. It is April 17th, 2020. I am yeah. Tony Dieterlisi. I'm here with my amazingly talented, always effervescent, often replicated, but I, never... I don't understand that line. Oft I imitated, but uh, never replicated. I was say, am I replicated? No, you're imitated, but Is never there replicated. Is something I don't know? Do you have a closet full, filled with clones of me? Clones. Do I meet an untimely end. Yes, Ange clones. The Ange. The world is not big enough for two Angelas. I think you should know that by now. Everyone knows that by now. Uh, big thanks to. I just want to say. Um, David Peterson, Andy Robinson, Lorinda Chapin, and Alfonso Morales, who are our big winners this week of the Junk Pot. Every single one of your packages went out. You should get them in the next few days. Enjoy that garbage. I'm taking a sip of my tea. Um, a little bit of, um, we've got a little bit of fast forwarding from yesterday. Um, uh, if, you know, if you're just joining us, we've been painting a fairy. We designed this whole fairy. And it was inspired by a orchid called the Papio, Psychopsis Papio, the butterfly orchid. And um, we went through a whole series of designs. If you go back in my YouTube or on my uh, Facebook page, you can see all the videos and you'll be able to see us develop it. We did a series of color studies this week where I slowly tortured Angela by using colors that she's not too fond of. But we did arrive on this one. Um, and I've done a couple little tiny minor tweaks. I did them in the computer and uh, got a whole kit to clean my color printer, but I'm out of inks, so I had to order ink. And because inks aren't really a priority, Ange, it's gonna take a couple weeks for those inks to get here. You can keep talking. I'm just reading all the nice comments about me. Oh. You guys are the best. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's her Britney Spears voice. You guys are literally the best. <laughs> um. So yesterday we traced this sucker onto a four-ply Strathmore plate Bristol board. I'll write that all down so I don't have to repeat it. It is Oh, that's good. You should have ply your frequently asked questions. Strathmore makes it. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to indent. Mark Brock, plate. did I get your message? No. 
Bristol board. So that's what it's on. We traced it using a light table, which is what this is mounted to. And then uh, we did all that with a number two pencil, this very one right here. Number two Ticonderoga, there it is, H Bay. And um, then we did a final drawing. We started it yesterday. I chose a Barrels Prismacolor. This is a, um, I don't know if it'll focus. There it is, the dark brown. I've used terracotta, I've used sepia, I've used a variety of browns. It's just this was the one I had uh, handy dandy. Uh, since I've seen you, we started that last uh, yesterday afternoon, Ange. We did her face, and um, and we had a whole dilemma with the shoes where we tried to figure the shoes out. And then um, I erased all the number two pencil, and I took out my titanium, unbleached titanium white and lay down a coat of that. And if you don't know what that's all about, again, just go back a few videos, go back to episodes um, 25, 24, or 26, and you'll see us uh, doing some color studies with that. So that brings us up to speed where I can actually start the shadows, Ange. Okay, I'm, I am here for that. I know I'm you are. And I've got my, ref our, still our inspiration is the butterfly found in Mo Molly Porridge's backyard, the orange tip, orange tip. That's an orange tip. Hello, Emily Juster. Hello, Emily. Good to hear from Greetings you again. Greetings to you and your daughter, Tori, and your dad, Norton, who oh. I always have to point out, uh, the Phantom Tollbooth author, fame, beloved author, friend of ours. Yes, hope your pop's doing okay and hanging in there. Yes. I'm going to go with cool shadows and a warm highlight. Uh, if you've been tuning in, you'll know that I'm using Holbein's Acrylic Gouache. Acrylic gouache made by Holbein, fine makers of paint such as acrylic gouache. Eric Berger, yes, we're going to see fan mail today. Oh, yes. If it ain't acrylic gouache, it ain't gouache. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to use a raw umber and an ash blue to start uh, kind of building up some of the shadows before we get into putting in some color. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that. And while I'm mixing that, Ange, how you doing? You know what? I'm doing pretty well today. Talk to me. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think. So yesterday, I, we talked about that we got a, um, a note from our friends, the owners of Little Shop of Stories, one of our favorite independent bookstores yep. in Decatur, Georgia, uh, where I was supposed to be doing an event uh, yesterday, actually. Yeah, um, you would have been. If I was on tour, and you know, I am, I am really happy because their GoFundMe is getting a lot of awesome support, um, and so that makes me really happy because the community is coming out to support them. That's great. Um, so you know, we made a, a donation to them, and because you know, in times like this, I just I feel good if I'm able to help someone else out a bit. Um, you know, that's awesome. They just, you know, bring a little. Bring what we can to other folks, which is why we're here today for you guys. That's right. Bring a little sunshine your way. A little sunshine and happiness. Um, you know, it occurs to me, Ange, I bet they would like to see my whole drawing set up right now because it's got a lot of little components and oh, they're really oh, only yeah, yeah, yeah. they're really only limited, only limited to a certain view. So I'm gonna unhook the phone. Okay. And hopefully I can line it back up. You'll have to bear with me, wise because well, it's, me, it's well, you want me to do this so they can see you? No, it's okay. I'm just going to do a scan over the okay, table. Okay. I know. You got excited. I'm sorry. I know. I was like, ooh. It's a, it's a beautiful day outside. You can see that. I'm going to do just a scan of the table so you can see. Hold on. Come back here. Take this shot right here. Look at that. Boom. Okay. There you go. See, I want you guys to see everything. Look, there's the long guy. He's, he's all uh, bundled up. So what I want you to see is a couple things. Uh, there's the reference. There's that. Here's how I pretend to know everyone's winners' names, but we've really written them all down. A little more inspiration, a little more reference. And then here's obviously the actual painting. This is another white, so you look here, there, this is a really old one. This is a new one I just made. Uh, just a little scrap that I'm testing the paint on. There's the color study. It now bears a few notes based on a conversation Angie and I had. And I've got, I've taped down a piece of paper towel. So what happens is, I will show you. I take my brush, I rinse it, I dab it before I go to paint, or I load it up with paint and maybe I wipe it before I go to paint. Okay, so there it is. Wait, you want to hold it? You want to hold it? <laughs> Angela's gonna Hold on. Wants to look, film a little bit. look. This. I want you guys to see if you're getting the virtual. This is what's going on. Check it out. 
there's the lawn guys. There's T. Right? There's the whole setup. I'm so there's the I art look, cabinet, by the so way. So said I look like Arthur Weasley today. <laughs> I've kind of got an Arthur Weasley vibe going on. And I'll take that. I love Arthur. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Okay, back to tea. All right, let me know if you want me to clip it back on. Go ahead. You want me to clip it back on? Sure. Okay, I'm going to clip it back on. All right, back in action. Bear with us. We'll try to make it interesting. But I wanted you to see the whole setup so you could really kind of see everything that's going on. I enjoy, I'm seeing so many hearts, a lot of love. Yay! They, they like seeing the whole setup. I think it's important. I mean, I want you guys to... You know, the, the usual thing is like people want to see as, as much of the painting oh, the as possible, painting. but it's good to see the whole, everything else that's going on on the perimeter, Ange, on the perimeter. Well, listen, I think what it is, too, is you're just, you're breaking down the magic. It's like going through a magic trick, right? When you look at it and you just see the trick, you're like, wow, that's impossible. I can't even believe my eyes. But then when you break it down into the steps, it becomes... A little more. Much more attainable, right? And I think... Demystified. I, demystified, exactly. And I see a lot of people posting on the um, fans of Drawn to Fantasy Facebook page. Ooh, tell me about that. And uh, well, uh, well, well, what they're saying is... So all you guys know. The fans of Drawn to Fantasy have come together to create a Facebook page. Um, and you can post your art there. You can share it. You can get feedback. You can just enjoy you could just watch and see really cool art you can engage and be supported by other artists it is awesome but a little seeing, like a little micro community yes. that's going on around this but i'm seeing a lot of artists saying oh i'm picking back up a pencil or a paintbrush because i'm feeling inspired and i think once you see a process of anything it like you said demystifies the process doesn't seem so overwhelming. I'm sure many of us have encountered that when we're like, I've got to do a thing around the house that I normally would hire a technician to do, but there's a guy on YouTube that says I can do it in 20 minutes with a screwdriver. You know what I mean? Like, remember when there was a there was an the auger, which is that I knew what that word was, kind of broke on our ice maker. Yes. And it was like you called General Electric. We are our fridge is a GE, and they said buy a new ice box which was like $300. And even though it was just, it's basically this kind of corkscrew that would spin the ice. So when you wanted to get ice out of your ice maker, it, the ice would tumble out. And because there was a part that was broken on the assembly, the ice would, it would make the ice, but it couldn't get the ice out. Mm -hmm. Then, so they're literally like buy a new one and, and you can either buy a new one or you can hire a technician for a minimal, you know, $100 or whatever it costs to come out and, you know, look at it, take it apart and replace it. So then I call, I, you know, we put it off for a while. You threw it to me. You're like, Tony, this is your thing. You need to deal with it. Yeah. And so I put it off I mean, and put I was it like, off. Whatever, I can deal without ice. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, you're like, just get a new refrigerator. Yeah, I you're like, was. I was like, get a new fridge. I can't deal with this anymore. <laughs> I need my ice. I don't want to open the door and have to reach in around <laughs> the, the ice tub. I was like, and... oh my gosh, we have to buy a bag of ice and pour it into the ice maker. Come on. Yeah. So I called back. I finally bit the bullet. I said, all right, I'm just going to buy the new ice maker. I talked to a new GE person. There's many, many lessons in this, which is you, you, you don't sometimes get the answer you want to hear when you call some of these service things. Call again because you might get someone who's having a little bit of a better day and feeling a little more helpful. The, the, the woman who helped me goes, all right, I'm going to email you an exploded diagram, like an exploded view of your ice maker. Can you tell me what part is broken if you look at it? And I said, absolutely. She goes, that's a $30 part. I said, okay, you'll have it in two days. Go on YouTube and there's a video on how to fix it. And you I took it. the ice maker apart. I, do, I felt like uh, Tim Allen and what was it show he used to be in? Where he was like, yeah, home improvement. Home improvement. I did a thing. Yes, so uh, I it was sat. Awesome. You guys went out to go do something and I'm like, I fixed the ice maker. That, that sense of accomplishment was quite nice. And it, it um, that's what I'm going to try to do with my color printer that's been sitting. Apparently, they're not allowed to sit ever. But that's the long of it, right? Breaking it down into manageable steps. Yes. It's not to say you're going to have the same style as Tony at drawing or painting or any of these things. But it's much easier to imagine yourself doing something when you can understand the process that it takes to get there. Yes. 
And what I can tell you, and I, again, I don't want to be dismissive of art colleges and art schools because they offer a lot. Um, but I didn't, ha I had sometimes we had demos when, in painting and stuff. Sometimes the teacher could, would show us, our professor would be like, here's how you do a thing or, you know, but more often than not, we were just mostly encouraged to just paint and go. So, um, so I'm hoping that these little daily things for those who are, um, aspiring artists might get something out of it more than just, um our entertaining banter. Yeah. Well, I think even that's a pretty cool thing too, is I've been watching like musicians um, do videos like Instagram Live and things like that. Oh yeah, you were watching... Um, Grace Vanderwall. Grace which Vanderwall. Which if you guys haven't seen Stargirl on Netflix, you should nope, check it. No, not Netflix, Disney uh, Plus. Sorry, Disney Plus, sorry. Um, Stargirl on Disney Plus. Um, the Grace Vanderwall is in it. It's based on the Larry, uh, Jerry Spinelli book. And it's a really great kind of coming of age, tweeny teeny story. It's got some John Hughes, Ghost of John Hughes vibes, but very contemporary. Yes. But mm -hmm. last night, Grace who Vanderwall, who is the star of that, who was also on America's Got Talent. She won America's Got Talent. She, um, she plays Stargirl. She That's plays literally Stargirl. her name. And yeah. she, last night she was on Instagram, and I just happened to see her on Instagram Live, and she was just in her room playing her ukulele and singing. Kind of hanging out. And... You know, you just went and saw, like, someone just doing the thing that they love, right? She and you were just, entertained. Yeah, I totally You watched it for a while. I know, I did. You did, and I played my game on my phone. Erica which... Alona, I loved it, too. She watched it? Yes, she said, such a great movie. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, I really, I we've recommended it to a few people, because we really, we really did enjoy it. And and the thing, it's, it's so nice to find a movie that, you know, Sophia, who's 12, will really get a kick out of as just as much as we do. Yeah, like we've been watching all the Harry Potter movies, and which has been awesome. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Harry Potter, we received an amazing gift in the mail this week. Earlier in the week, I keep forgetting to bring it down from Sophia's room, but today... So it wasn't just a gift for Sophia. It was a gift, one for the whole family. Fun for the whole family. Fun. One and, oh, there was one for each of us, and they are fun for the whole family. So uh, if you've been tuning into this since its early uh, inception, you know, 27 episodes ago, we uh, one of the first recipients, an early recipient of the um, junk pot, was, Before uh, it was even a junk pot. It was just when my garbage, garbage or my recycle, recyclable <laughs> garbage was Eric Burkert. And Eric received his junk and um, wrote back a very lovely letter from him and his wife named Mel. And um, they have an Etsy shop where they make the dice. The coolest bags. dice bags. They are amazing. Now, dice bags are something uh, gamers know. I'm going to save this one for the last. This one's inspired by... This is a dice bag inspired by Angela's color palette. This one's inspired by uh, this very show, The Drawn to Fantasy. These are like Graham's colors of his scales. And this one is the one Sophia got, which, holy cow, can you believe she squealed with joy that she now has a dice bag that is also the Marauder's Map. So if you're interested in that... You guys need a dice bag. These are high quality. They even put these cool little beads on the back. I mean, there's this is awesome. There you go, Sinisterly Crafty. Brought to you today by Sinisterly Crafty, you makers guys. of fine dice bags the world over. So Eric thank you, Burger Eric. and Mel. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your generosity. Unnecessary, but very, very kind. Thank and you. And very appreciated. Thank so, you hey, so much. I dropped most of these shadows in with a pretty small brush. This is a number eight. Um, it's got a long, uh, long bristle, and it's flicky, so I can kind of sketch with it. Oh, what's the, somebody said, what's the um, Etsy address? Eric, will you post, uh, put your, your Etsy address? I, it was on the card, so if you just, later, if you rewind... You'll be able to see it too. Now I'm going to jump Sinisterly ahead. Crafty. Sinisterly Crafty over at Etsy. Now I'm going to jump to a 12. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of a gradient. So the light source, 
I'm guessing is like right here. I want the light to be here. It's lighting up her. It's going to light up the water droplet. And that means the things furthest away from light are going to slowly gradate into shadow. And fortunately, this pace is, is uh, aimed in the right direction. I'm going to move the camera ever so slightly down so you can see this. And I'm going to do a very nice light gradient using a bigger brush. And I'm going to wet the area that I want to do the gradient in. Okay, so it'll be very receptive to the paint. I don't want it to be, I don't want the paint to be strokey and I don't want the strokes to be defined. I want the paint to run and produce the gradient. So I'm very lightly putting this wash in. You can see, I'm gonna manipulate the paint. And so what this is doing, Ange, is this is getting rid of all the highlights become, you know, low, the lower end of highlights going in towards middle tone. We don't even have shadow here, um, but it's just to create, as I said, kind of a, a, a gradient away from, of shadow yeah. to create a little depth. I'm gonna do a little bit of it here as well. Um, I'm not gonna go too bonkers because the problem is if I go too crazy, it'll start looking dirty. I don't want it to look dirty. I don't want it to look dirty. So I'm gonna also do just a little bit of broad shadows. Yard dudes. Yard guys, ghostbusters. Yard dudes are here. I'm gonna do a little bit here. So I'm just using real broad strokes. Bear with us guys, it won't take them long for him to Eric finish Kirchner. blowing the uh oh, he just walked by it's like a java he does look like a java he's almost done i didn't want to shoo him off because our yard really needed it he's really doing a thorough job isn't he Ange? he yeah, really yeah. he doesn't want a single leaf remaining <laughs> so you can see i've done a nice gradient i'm going to let it dry naturally i don't want to hit it with a hair dryer because what I want it to do is, um, I want to let the ink naturally, or the pigment kind of naturally migrate to where it needs, needs to. I'm gonna let gravity kind of do its thing. You see, I'm very gently putting in some more, just delineations in the ruffles here. Ruffle delineation? Delineation in oh, the yeah, ruffles. So it creates a little dimension. bit of depth in those ruffles. A little bit here, so you you know, so here's the uh, okay. kind of you can kind of see what happens with a small brush and a large brush, I'm kind of laying that in. So, so good, it looks so look already just tonally, it looks good. So yeah, right. This is the underpainting. This is the tonal structure that's going to allow me to build off of everything. Now, there's something I want to point out to you. <laughs> this um, the Strathmore plate Bristol has sizing. We've talked about sizing all week. It's kind of a clear or it's kind of a coating that they put over the board. And um, I, it used to be a thin coat of clay. I don't know what, they, what it is made of anymore. I'm not a uh, paper engineer or paper chemist, whatever person that makes paper is. The Strathmore- Oh, that's a um, paperologist. Paperologist. The Strathmore, I don't know if you can see this. So this is my little testing strip. Wait till Ghostbuster walks away. They said it's not that loud. Because oh, you gotta good. remember, you're close to the mic. Close to the mic, good. Also, I have a question for you. I know you're so much. I just want to mention you guys. When you buy the Strathmore, when you get it, and this is a piece of, uh, from the broken ornament with Miss Tinsel here, in the very far corner, it's stamped, right? And if you flip the board over, you can see the back of the stamp. I have found that this side with the stamp has a smoother surface than the back side. I suspect they put more sizing on that side than the other. I have found this because I've gone to paint willy-nilly and not thought about what side of the board I paint on, only to find that the side, there is actually a front and a back to the board. So, um, I had to make sure that I, that I knew which side this was on. Uh, do you want to ask about, Caroline Craig wants to know about standing versus sitting for painting. I actually like to stand. I gotta let it dry, Ange. And just giving me the like, get the get painting um, signal. I gotta let it dry before I do any other steps. Uh, Sorry. Wait, where do you get what, Penny? Hold on, I'm gonna hit it with the. Yeah, it's still wet down here. 
Lots of <laughs> got lawn mowers and blowers and oh, hair dryers. See, Amanda Putnam Palmer working for Chart Pack. Most companies do that for their paper, two different sizing textures. Yes. Yes, thank you, Amanda. So it is more textured on the other side. It's a little more porous on the flip side. I like the smoother surface. I'll tell you why. Let me show you. Um, there's a little bit of it here. I can get sharp lines with the paintbrush, like this little right around here. It's just sharp. It didn't move. Um, same here along the edge. It doesn't bleed out at all. I can really sketch with the paint. Uh, I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Naples in, Angie. I believe that was the next step we did with and this. you're using gouache. I'm using a whole bunch of acrylic gouache. Not watercolor. Not watercolor, although watercolor works terrific on this plate. It gets real puddly. A lot of what's going on, let me see if I can show you. I'll pull an example later, probably a little easier to pull an example and show you, but you can do some pretty neat stuff with watercolor. So now I'm going to, um, and by the way, I don't normally lean my uh, palette here, but I'm trying to for sake of showing you. Um, use Naples Yellow for um, the color of her um, dress, for lack of a better word. I'm not using a whole lot. I'm going to test it. We do have very smart viewers. I, ha I agree with you, Molly. Molly Porridge. Molly. All right, so now I'm just, you can see, I'm just putting in a full, even coat of the Naples. Uh, I'm trying to stay in the lines-ish, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I can always come in with some white later and kind of cut out the outline, which I often do. <laughs> or if I want it to look sketchy, I let it bleed out, you know? Okay, so there's the dress blocked in. One of the things Ange was concerned about was in the original color study, the wings had a lot of yellow in them too. So they, it, there was a lot of yellow going on between her outfit, her pedally outfit and the wings. So what I'll do today is I'm gonna brush a little blue in the wings and start pushing them in a different color direction. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this on her face face. There we go. They're really blowing the yard clean. Can't even hear it. Oh, okay. Gotta remember, they, could, they couldn't hear you as well down there. They can hear you. Okay, good. Next to the mic. Okay, good. Is my guess. Put a little bit of yellow here on her bloomers, pants. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's the yellow, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop a little bit of blue just for you, Andrew. I'm using a smalt, so something with a little bit of guts. Not my, smalt? yes, not my ash blue, which yes. is my favorite. I'm gonna use the smalt. I love those earthy colors. I'm an earthy guy. I'm literally dressed in gray and brown. <laughs> also, I didn't think I was gonna be on camera, but. Got a little bit of blue here. I'm just gonna brush it in. Again, using this really big brush. This also tends to happen when I paint. I usually use Pantolins. bigger brushes to kind of lay the color, the color in. And then the brushes get finer and finer as we go along. So a little bit of blue on the wings just to differentiate them from the dress. And then of course we're gonna do the browns and the orangey kind of golds in the um, mustards in the wings. I'm just now I've cleaned the brush. I'm lifting a little bit out in the areas where it would be more translucent. Now I've talked about the gouache being able to rub. This gouache here is probably pretty dry. Uh, same with on her on her sleeve. So I'm going to zoom in, kind of looking to see where we're at. All right, I'm going to wet, and I'm just going to keep moving it back and forth. You're lifting it out. It's moving the pigment, but not too much. Now, if this was just straight up gouache. Did that have blue in it or no? It did have a little blue in it, didn't it? it? I blue. washed it out. It must have been a little Probably bit left. Probably your dirt. <laughs> it must have been a little left in the. Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. what I want. There's all different ways. That you can see here, I'm just doing it by repeatedly going in the same motion. But do you see how it's kind of sculpting? Light and shadow. Along the all way. 
So now I'm looking for places to, oh, I'm off the screen. Let me zoom out. So like here, hopefully you can see it. It's subtle, but it's doing it. Definitely here you can see it. So this is the technique that the turn of the century illustrators, Arthur Rackham, Edmund Dulac, W. Heath Robinson, they would wet, they would lay down a, a, a field of color. Here, you're really gonna see it here. Let me zoom in. What brush are you using? I'm just using a soft, there you go, you can see it there. See it lift out? And you can do that as detailed or as aggressively as you want. I'm doing it very broadly. I used to do it very detailed where I'd go in and, and drip drab like little tiny drops of color out of it. But I don't do that as much anymore. I'm, I've become a more confident painter, but that's how those guys did it. They would go in and they would, they would um, lift and add, lift and add, constantly lifting and adding pigment. Let me see if I can do a little, I'll try to lift a little bit on her face so you can see. I'll zoom way in. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a little bit. I'm gonna switch to a different brush. I'm gonna go. I find the stiffer. The How do you not oversaturate the paper? Well, I'm letting areas dry and then I hit it with the hair dryer. So I'm using, this is a really, I've had this brush probably for 20, 30 years. It's, it's great for scrubbing out. It looks like it was a number five round brush. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think it was a number five. You can see the head on it is, it's a mop. I told you I was rough on the brush. So I'm gonna wet first, okay? Let that soak in for just a couple seconds and that's gonna um, reactivate the gouache. The acrylic's down, it ain't going anywhere. But now, you see that I'm lifting Ange, do you see that? Mm -hmm. I lifted just a little bit out of it. It's very subtle, but it's done. And so this is what those turn of the century artists, this was the this was definitely the technique that they did. And, and they did it with watercolor. And why, just uh, is this? Just creating more subtle, nuanced, tonal, like, you know, here, like, watch, I'll do it in the flowers here so you guys can see. So I'm wetting them first. So this is one of the magic abilities of this acrylic gouache. It, it won't, if this was gouache, I could probably lift it all the way to white, Ange. Yeah, by the which way. Which people find infuriating. But because there's acrylic in it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stain. It's going to leave a little bit there. And this does take a while to get used to. But I have found that the combination of acrylic gouache on this Bristol board gives nice results. So there you go. You can see how I've lifted a little bit out here. I'll do a little more on her, on her thorax. I'm wetting, I'm wetting, I'm letting it soak. Now I'm gonna hit it and really, I'm scrubbing it out. So it got a little whiter. There we go. And that's kind of how you do that wet lifting. And grit, get why I'm doing all that, other areas of the painting are drying, which is great. Now, one of the things I really was looking forward to painting today, I'll zoom back out, so cool. was this drop of water. I kind of just made the drop of water, the drop of dew up, and then I Googled water drops. Now, here's one. I noticed something immediately when I Googled water drops. Where do you get your paper, by the way? Which paper? Your, that you're on right now, your Bristol. Uh, I ordered it from our local art supply store, the Guild. But you can order it online. Just the stra I can put Ange can post that it's four ply Strathmore plate Bristol. I think you could probably order it from just about anywhere. Here's another water drop on a leaf or something. Um, here's what I noticed, Ange, when it's a suspended drop. Let's see if our eagle-eyed uh, friends can notice it. The drop of water reflects like a mirror. So the shadow is actually at the top because it's like a mirror. So this is reflecting this on the top. Same here. It's reflecting the bottom. It's weird. It's like an inverse, which I thought was really interesting. So I'm going to use that as a little bit. Also, the shot, the highlight is very similar. You got a little tiny, you got a lot on the bottom, but you got this little dink, and it's almost exactly the same on here. So... For my, look at that, it's just so bizarre. It looks like glass or ice. So for my water drop, I wanna start thinking about the colors that are surrounding it 
and how I want to do that highlight. So what I think I would do, and I could totally mess this up, but I'm going to try. I'm going to go back to my shadow color, which is that umber and ash blue. Test it out, see what I got. I'm going to start there. I'd say, and I don't want it to look like an egg. I want it to look like a drop of water. Hold on. I'm gonna just have it. Hey, Aaron Archer. Aaron Archer, how you doing, dude? I'm gonna have this nearby so I can have a little security blanket while I work on it. There we go. So no, my... the board is not gesso. soaked. I did nothing to the board. And I'm using so little water that I also don't need to treat the back of the board either. I'm gonna try this. Actually, you know what I need to do, Ange? It just occurred to me. Okay. What's that? What? Turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. The, the, the paint needs to go towards the top of the water bead. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna zoom in so you can enjoy at home. And I'm gonna attempt to paint this water bead and I want all that pigment to just sit right there it is. Is this the technique you used for all the spiderwick illustrations? For the field guide, yes. But to a much um, more ridiculous level of detail. Like I would have reference for every, this will get pretty detailed though by the time it's all said and done. But yes, it was, this is it. This is the same board I worked on. This is the same everything. So you see, because I flipped it upside down, all the pigment is running away. Even though I put just as much pigment on the edge as I did here, it's all running down towards the top, which when I flip it, is going to look hopefully like our bead of water. And Ange, I'm gonna put a little, little blue in that. Mm. Let that kind of trickle up into it. Oh my gosh, that bead is giving me, is anybody else just being like holding your breath for that bead of water? Waiting for it to go. Yes. Pfft. It's not gonna go anywhere, you gotta trust me. And you don't need to hit it with, now the, the, the sad thing is, I also, can't hit it with the hairdryer because it will blow the water, it'll blow the pigment in the water back up. And so I need it to just sit and dry. I could probably hit it from afar just to kind of speed it up. So I'm, I just, you don't want to hit it too hard because it'll disrupt the drying. What'd we do? Well, <laughs> oh my god that's amazing oh my god what'd you do on friday i watched paint dry it's almost dry almost there still quite a bit oh my gosh i know it's 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 a process I'm gonna let that keep going. While I've got it upside down, I could also work on her face. Uh, it looks like there's a little blue on her face, Ange. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that up. Or do you think we should just go to the green? I love all this straw color. I don't know if I wanna mess with that. Oh, We had blue. Yeah, I agree. We had blue in the color study, and I'm not sure I want to. I know it feels. I don't like think I, I want that. More delicate than that, right? Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it kind of straw colored. Yeah, I agree. Like kind of. What it is? Yes. This kind of weedy straw color. All right, let's give this. Um, I'm gonna tape it for a second. Let it let it finish drying. It's almost there. And in the meantime, I will mix for my. Um, there's like a blue on what I'll call her thorax. And I'm gonna mix that, I'll get that going. I'm gonna work different areas, why other areas are drying, so I'll come back to them. So there's the blue. This is that ash blue I used earlier. I'm literally just putting a straight up full coat. <laughs> June Gallagher, I was so intently watching, I almost drooled. <laughs> <laughs> So I put an even coat and I'm gonna, I just wet the brush and clean the brush and I'm just gonna. Well, it's not as blue as it is in your. No, painting. we're gonna have to lay it. Gonna, um, 
translucent. Maybe, uh, maybe the paint's too thin. I gotta thicken it up. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'll build it up. Okay. Not to worry, Ange. Looking at my water drop. Hey, water drop. What's going on? It's almost like when you look at it, it's almost like a marble. I know that looks weird, but just wait. Okay, water. I'm just adding, no, I'm just adding a little bit of water to let it kind of do its thing. Hmm. Yeah, you, uh, Emily C. Martin wants to see your paint mixing process at some point. Like how much paint maybe to water? Oh. Yeah, uh, it's varying. We're super when thin. You do it. We're doing a lot of uh, thin washes right now, so everything's pretty thin. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. I mean, look, here's the blue. This is that ash blue mixed with the um, umber. It's amazing. I can see it. I, I, I just know it so well now. Even though it's translucent, I can still make out what it is. But you can see it's, I'm working all in thin, thin glazes right now just to try to get everything the way I want it. Um, I'm going to let the, I'm going to hit this with the dryer. I want this water drop to be done. It, like right now it's not blue. It's not what? Blue. The you water? Want blue on that? The water? Yeah. No. Why would it be blue? No, I'm just curious. No. It's like a gray. Is that what that was? Right there. See, oh right yeah, there. he's right on the red-headed woodpecker. No, he's a, like a downy. Oh. They like the feeder, that's, that's why. Cool. He's cool. Gonna... there's a ton of uh, birds outside. We have a bird feeder hanging right outside of Tony's studio, and we just filled up the seed a couple days ago. And let's see if you going... guys. Let's see if we can do nature. Nature in action here at Dieter Lizzie Studios. Let's see. Oh, where'd he go? Of course, now that he's there, he, there is. he is. And then there's the feeder, so he's... There he is, he's coming. Anyway. There you go. Kind of a fun... Lots of birds. Birds, 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 birds. Birds, birds, birds. Oh, of course, like 20 of them fly up. Yeah, as soon as I move the phone of back, course. guess what? They it know. was like literally Alfred Hitchcock just walked in the backyard. What seed mix you got going there? Uh, just like a songbird mix. Gets all the chickadees and everything that are still here from the winter. Okay, I'm going to flip her back. It's all back and forth, so it'll it's all gonna be a lot of little of this, little of that. I kind of bounce around. If you've watched me do my inking, it's the same same way. I'm kind of moving moving around the piece. Hey, he's at the feet. Yeah, he should be. It's it's definitely there to attract. It said woodpecker, so cool. he's he's uh, he's, he's joining the party. Ooh, a hummingbird inspired sprite. Yeah, well, hummingbirds and awesome. and definitely inspired the. Um, the truth birds in, in Wandla. But yeah, you could do a sprite. Well, I think we played around the idea of... And this is our wild America. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing a little lift out now, Ange, on the underneath it to really get that, like, glow on that water bead. Mm -hmm. See that? Oops. A little bit of air. Now, see? It dried in a weird ring. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can remedy that. It's going to drip the other way, but I'm hoping it'll try to feather it. So crazy. How much details in painting a water drop? <laughs> yeah. We'll get there. No worries. Um, all right, I'm going to get a little bit of the uh, raw umber that's with the blue, and then I think there was a, a scooch of green in this. <laughs> Today's episode brought to you by birds. Experience the magic of flight. Nice. I like when Disney does it. They're like, Disney's birds. <laughs> That's right. Birds never existed. Birds before. never existed. Welcome Disney's to Disney's birds. birds. More vibrant than other birds. Brought to you by the magical world of Their Disney. Their songs more cheerful than other bird songs. Disney's birds. 
Disney's birds. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm brushing in a mix of the raw umber, uh, green, and ash blue. And I'm just getting a little, I want a little bit of green in this party. And I'm gonna build up the blue. So the green, that, that brown, that um, umber had red in it. So what happens is this green's hitting it and you're getting a really nice, very rich. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some inconsistencies here <laughs> just by dabbing in it. And I'm gonna go up here, start blocking in the color. Really, this is just laying in basic color here. I'm off the probably off the top here. I'll just do it real fast. Let's see you guys. I'll zoom out, zoom up so you get to see the where I'm at. <laughs> the girls are eating something, which is why they're laughing. And <laughs> so um, I'm just, you can see I'm not, it's also a little bit of sketching with the brush. It's not just fill it all the way in. What's the music in the background tonight? This is, what are we listening to? I'll tell you what we're listening to right now. Right now, you're listening to Chrysanthemum by Milana Zilnick. Milana Zilnick? That sounds like a Harry Potter character. <laughs> Milana, Milana This Zil is classical chill on Apple Music. Selections for Serenity. And really, we all need that right now, don't we? We need it. We need it. Right? What are we doing? What's our movie tonight? Last week, we were so excited about our Friday night movie. I was watch Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah, we were going to watch Groundhog Day because we're living it. I know. I thought that would be kind of funny, right? It'd be fun to watch with Soph. Good NPR voice. Thank you. Yeah, it's Groundhog Day. I used to uh, work on Saturday Night Live, and I did make up for Molly Shannon, who did Delicious Dish on NPR. She did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, good, times. good times. Good times. Good times. Good times. Delicious. You're watching Delicious Dish. I'll put a little bit of green in You're there. Listening to. This is not this is great music, but it's not normally what I'd be listening to. It would be I had 70s going earlier. I have like a 70s AM FM mix. I just put this on because it's just kind of like well, first of all, it doesn't interrupt us being able to chat with you guys. Yeah, so you don't because have normally Tony would be belting out Goodbye, out. Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, exactly. Saturday nights are rock, but we'll find Rihanna. And I have, uh, Get a now. you will soon quickly find that um, any kind of artistic and creative talents have all been put into visual art and not at all into music. What's that, somebody, that little spot on the wing? Is that a piece of paint? That little tiny dot mm -hmm. right there? That's a eagle eyes. That's just a drip. I'm just wetting That is a... not my eagle eyes. That is Hernan Kowalski's eagle eyes. I'm using a little bit of water, and I just lifted it out. I'm usually not that picky. There's another one right here. This is where they get They're harder. boogers. Yeah. There's going to be drips all over this when it's done, guys. It does not... You would clean that up in Photoshop. I'll either clean it up in Photoshop. Well, I try to clean... <laughs> I try to clean up the original, but often... More often than not, there are white, white out blobs all over the painting when it's done. All right, I'm going to zoom back down. Yes. All right, season's eatings. There we go. Nice full view. Um, next stop, I'm going to do the brown, brown, brown of the wings. So I'm going to take a brown. So good. Honey. <laughs> I sound like Cher. If I could turn back to home. home. I'm going to mix a little sepia. Now, sepia, Angie, is much darker, and it's got a lot more red in it than the umber. Ooh, yeah, sepia. Yeah, sepia. So I'm going to mix that into the green. Did you do it already? No, I'm mixing it into the green, so it's going to make this great no, kind of... i say you did it just so you can see how much paint you're using. Oh, it was like a tiny touch. There's going to be lots of painting coming up. Um, we should talk about... So I want to try to get this done. Now, normally, as we had said on previous... 
uh, episodes. Oh, I like that. It's like very olive Yeah. Thank you. On previous episodes, we kind of said that this would be, um, this would have been done in a matter of day, two days at the most, between the sketching, the color studies, and this final. We've stretched it all out for your enjoyment and our enjoyment. But um, what's happened is work has come up, and I've got work to do. And the work I have to do, Ange, is for Simon & Schuster. Yes. The publisher of many of my books, including the forthcoming Kenny and the Book of Beast, the sequel to Kenny and the Dragon. I have some uh, artwork to create for that that I just found out. I asked if I could do this, because normally you kind of do this on the DL. You do it, it, and uh, no one sees it until it's time to show people, but given the circumstances we're in, I asked if I could share that process live so you could see me like working, like straight up just working, not doing, this is a demo for... So you're going to do a marketing piece. I'm going to do a couple pieces. Uh, They're going to release a box set of the two books together. And they ask, they always ask this, if I want to create new art. Now, sometimes for box sets, they just use one of the covers. But um, they know I'm crazy and insane. And they asked if I um, wanted to create exclusive content so a, rid, a new well, lots a, of arts happening for this combo oh great so a new a new kenny and the dragon painting a full color and i'm just going to work on the whole thing live with you guys you're going to watch me paint it uh design it i mean when i tell you i have only a few sketches i literally they are like tiniest of thumbnail sketches with some very loose ideas based on what the team at simon schuster wants i have to talk to the art director lizzie first but I did get the thumbs up from the publisher, Justin Shonda, uh, yesterday that uh, we could share it live, like, which, again, is something we normally don't do because it goes through a process. It's going to get approved and looked at, and they'll have feedback, and there's all kinds of things. But uh, you know what? Why not? Yeah. It's what I'd be doing. This is the stuff I've done in the last few weeks. I mean, we did a little work. I mean, we did a little of that stuff for for uh, Dark Sword, but, uh, and I've been sketching and researching for my next picture book I want to do, but I I honestly haven't been doing a whole lot of like real deal work. So uh, we're going to do that. And I have some marketing uh, artwork I need to create. So images for the marketing department to use to promote the book. So lots of uh, Kenny and the Dragon coming up for the next couple of weeks. That's what I'll be doing. You'll be able to watch it live, real real deal stuff. And um, aren't it, you, by the way, I want to also inter- interrupt for a moment. Weren't you talking about today, after this, after we're done with our Facebook Live, you were saying you were thinking about going over to Instagram. I don't know. What do you think, Ange? I mean, I, I was I was kind of inspired by Grace Vanderwall last night, how she was like, I was on Facebook doing a thing, and now I just wanted to come on to Instagram to do to keep it going. And I thought, that's kind of fun. Yeah, I Why think not? you should. All right, so maybe if you guys are fan on Instagram, I'm gonna go to Instagram at uh, Four you know, five. in about five minutes, <laughs> and keep going. We'll just keep painting. Now for the Kenny and the Dragon stuff, you guys will have to let Ange and I know. I mean, one of the thoughts I had was, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm working on it all day. I mean, it's it's a full day. Now I don't think I'll stream all day, but uh, it may be a thing where, you know, starting at. Um, Two o'clock. Can you zoom in a little bit? Just yeah. this is for my own selfish. Yeah. Just I'm just building up. This is the sepia. That. I'll show you the formula. This is Will it, the Kenny and the Dragon Works be paintings, inks, or pencils? Paintings. It started with this. This was my shadowy color. I added a little green to it to get the green. And we did that a couple steps ago. And then I put a dot of sepia in it, which got a lot of red. Instagram so when that... goes live. It's just Tony D. Ter- Terle- Tony D. Terlizzi is his Instagram. Yeah. And a little p- up here on the top. You'll see that I'm live. You'll see that he's live. Someone asked how much paint do I generally put. There's a little bit of raw umber waiting to be used that yes, hasn't been used snacks, yet. David May. Always bring snacks. Always bring snacks. And by the way, Ange, you said you saw that it looks like Facebook can be f- fed to a TV now. Someone had... Yes. Had... When I signed on, it prompted me to say, do you want to see this larger... On a this TV. Can, yeah, it can go to your TV. So maybe if you have a smart TV, they finally worked it out. So that can happen. Is our TV smart? Is it smarter, smarter than, than we are? <laughs> Definitely. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this on the shoes, Ange. I don't know what the the shoe color is going to be. I agree with but that. But I feel like... Because I like put... the... Um, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and get it, it on there. It anchors it right to see that repetition. Yeah, I love well, it. we can we can. T, it's looking so good. We can figure. Oh, thank you. You wow. know that means a lot to me when you when you like it. I are get, you zoomed out? Right. Yeah, now? I'm zoomed okay. out so you can see. Just a little bit. I'll, we'll figure out all the colors when we get there, but. Um, Gage, you cat, you put yours on your TV every day. You have a smart TV then, eh? Wow, your TV. They can airplay to Apple TV. I forgot about that too. You can screen mirror, right? That's cool. <gasps> awesome! I love that you guys are watching this. Yay, Apple product! Yay! Sponsored when it works. By Apple. Yeah. Also, by man, it's just like people sell out, and it's just so sad. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take, hit the pause button here because I feel like it's a good place to stop. What I'm gonna do. Next is I'm going to, I think, what I'm trying to do is get in all the big colors and, and then we can nudge. I think I'm going to do all this next. I'm going to do all, I'm going to spin the piece around, Ange, and do the um, cool. the orangey stuff and the wings. Um, and what I may also do, or I might, sometimes I finish an entire part. And I think if I finish the face, I, I can use that as my guide to finish the whole rest of the thing. So we may do that. We'll just see. But if you're inclined, hop over to Instagram. We're gonna keep it going. We'll keep it rolling for a little bit longer. And otherwise, I'll be back on Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. And we have a little bit of, of um, swag today, a little bit of junk. I have extra swag. Hold on, while you find a winner. Ooh, what are you, ooh. I have been, uh, well listen, I... Where you? Oh, whoa, what I'm just showing what. Oh I yeah, yeah. Show them. Show them what. Oh, hold on, hold on. What are they winning? Hold on, I gotta get. I'll just switch my music for this. Oh, I don't know where it went. This is where I get. I get to enjoy myself. Let's see in my album. Oh, I don't. I must have printed. But I had. I have been doing printouts of some of the other stuff. I had printed out the, the uh, ink drawings and stuff. But I do have. I have extra printouts of her. We've got loads of stickers. We're gonna put all that in everyone in whoever wins. Oh, you're today. showing them what they win? Yes, yes. Did I do that too fast? Yes. So there's a sketch of her. That's one of the printouts. Of course, we load it with stickers and fun stuff. Oh wait, what? So who's gonna to win today? Oh, I like that. Yes. Today, who wins the junk pot? Mmm. Today's junk pot winner is. <laughs> Juster! Oh, Emily. Emily, you've been joining us regularly. It's been wonderful having Emily here with us. She's been in our thoughts. Uh, her daughter, uh, Tori's birthday is next week. Or oh, Sunday, you man, say, that's awesome. Um, now, I, know, I normally don't go for the birthday ploy, but also, um, you know, I just want her to know uh, how much we're thinking of her and her family, and uh, especially her dad, of course. Um, and so we're sending love to uh, to you guys. And so you're a big winner today. Join me in congratulating Emily. Emily Juster. <laughs> Very nice. I was all excited with my uh, my theme show, my that's, game show. That's great. I love it. Yeah, that was pretty good. Emily Juster, you're going to win this very very abstract masterpiece as well, where I dry my brush. How exciting is that? <laughs> if that doesn't... That, oh, that's what she gets? That's an original painting <laughs> right there, Emily. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I hear Rich Michelson is giving deals on framing, so it should only cost two or three thousand dollars to get this masterpiece <laughs> framed. <laughs> Thank... <laughs> that's how every one of my jokes is received. Oh, you guys, I have some sad news today. Oh, jeez. The slide whistle was delayed until Monday. Oh, man. Yeah, the slide whistle will be here, but not until Monday for all of those who are wondering where it was. Where's the slide whistle? Where's the slide whistle? You can torture me with it on Monday, Ange. Yes. And for the rest of my life. Well, guys, thank you for another week. It was awesome. I had a good time. I hope you did, too. We're creating art slowly but surely. You came and watched paint dry today. But we got a lot done. And um, I hope you guys all have a good weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we'll get through this together. You and guys, here we are. We made it through another week. Another this week. Is week four of quarantine. Week four. Together, guys. We're doing it. We did it. We're all hanging in there. We're going to get through it together. And there'll be a time when we look back and go, whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> be well. 
This is Tony D and Ange D signing off from Drawn to Fantasy. It's Drawn to Fantasy with Ange and Tony D. Those are goldfinches. Two of them. That's a pair. Oh, no, those are... Yeah. Well, you could tell because the female's on top telling the male what to do. <laughs> and you know what? She's right. She's right. All right, guys. Have a great Thank weekend. We'll see you.